Brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, and Dolce & Gabbana are huge names in the sunglasses industry, having set benchmarks for functional and fashionable eyewear for the last 90 years. These sunglasses, all hundreds to thousands of dollars a piece, but these prices aren't just about their impressive quality or design, it's about the power and control held by one company. Today, we're getting into the shady underbelly of the sunglasses industry. Now, back in the day, if it was sunny out, you either had to just squint and bear it, or you were one of the traditional indigenous people who were wearing something like this. Since then, we've seen multiple instances of sunglasses-like garments being fashioned, some of them more fashionable than others, <clears throat> but it wasn't until the late 1930s when two German immigrants won a military contract for their brand to produce aviator sunglasses. These were polarized and reflective to give pilots a competitive advantage in the air. Think of like Tom Cruise and Top Gun, stuff like that. In fact, the movie industry really helped popularize sunglasses. Some sources suggesting that their initial public acceptance was thanks to tired-eyed actors desperate to escape camera flashes. In the 1950s, Ray-Ban took the step to begin a new model of sunglasses, the Wayfarer. This was a new technology on the market. Injection molded plastic allowed for massive production and uniform quality. The design lasted well over 40 years, worn by celebrities around the world, from musicians to politicians. Some product placement in popular movies also continued to help sales. Basically, at this point, if you asked a toddler to draw a pair of sunglasses, they would very likely come up with a terrible rendition of the Ray-Bans. But just like the shit drawing capabilities of your niece or nephew, sorry guys, someone swooped in to take over the job. In comes Luxottica. The Italian eyewear giants buy Ray-Bans in 1999 and completely overhauls the business. The American factories are shut down, production is moved to Italy, and prices get jacked up through the roof. From this day forward, Ray-Bans are no longer allowed to be sold in gas stations and supermarkets. Instead, they can only be sold through those high-end retailers and sunglasses specialists, which, get this, are mostly owned by Luxottica as well. Fast forward a little bit further and you see the master plan that Luxottica had in mind. In 2018, the eyewear world would become an oligopoly. Simply put, this is just where a bunch of businesses own all of the stuff and control everything. Now, you may have heard of Luxottica at some point, but you probably haven't heard of their shadowy twin, Essilor, which does sound sort of dark and mysterious, doesn't it? Essilor was a French company that is basically the equivalent of Luxottica, but instead of buying up major fashion brands, they buy the producers of lenses, lens technology, and research labs. The two saw each other from across the room and they were like two starstruck lovers and knew in that moment that they needed to be together in order to screw everybody over and make as much money as possible. Like most weird rich people, they named their newly formed corporate baby Essilor Luxottica, which is not a very imaginative name, but honestly, it could have been worse. There's a lot of examples of how it could have gone worse. But the name is not the only thing that's crazy. Luxottica accounted for 14% of the $139 billion eyewear market before they merged. Essilor accounted for another further 13%. So this merger created a company that effectively owns over a quarter of the entire eyewear market. Now these numbers are debated. It could probably be a lot more than this. Probably not a lot less than this though. However, it is safe to say that this company is winning the game by making the rules. This is essentially like when you're playing Monopoly and then you realize that every single property on the board has a hotel on it and every one of those hotels are owned by that relative that you don't love anymore. But it doesn't stop there. Oh no, Elsilor Luxottica, which we're gonna now forever refer to as EL, describes itself as a vertically integrated company, which sounds fancy and high tech, but it actually isn't. Vertical integration just means that they don't just own the sunglasses. They own the patents they sell, the manufacturers that make them, the brands below them, and the shops that sell them. They even own the second largest eye health insurance company in America, 
iMed Vision Care. This vertical system gives EL a huge amount of influence over the industry, far beyond their supposed 27% market share. For example, in 2007, when Oakley was blowing up, the Luxottica Group stopped stocking Oakley in all of their retail stores, which happened to crash their sales and overall value, allowing Luxottica to acquire them. That is basically corporate piracy right there. I'm just imagining them like Jack Sparrow walking into the boardroom and just slapping their terms down on the table with a giant sword stuck into the middle. In total, EL licenses to or outright owns 33 brands, 22 retail chains, and 11 different lens manufacturers. And according to them, their company vision is to keep expanding. Get it? Their vision, you know, the vision that they have for the, cause they're a sign glasses company. Hey everyone, quick interruption to say thank you for this beautiful thing. A hundred thousand of you. We know it's been a little while since we passed this milestone, but it's huge for us. And now it is official. So for everyone who pressed that button, who watches these videos, who likes the stuff that we're doing, thank you so much. And hey, if things keep going the way they're going, maybe we'll get the next one. All right, back to the video. Now, over the past few decades, EL has set an industry standard in both price and quality. But what does that mean when they own all of the competition, you might be asking. Now, if you find this kind of thing interesting, you should definitely consider joining our Reddit community where we share news and rumors and ideas about corporate America and business today. So come hang out. We're a fun group. Now, Ray-Ban alone makes up approximately 30% of EL's profit, and from a quick look on their website, their most popular models like the Wayfarer are mostly made of plastic. Prices for Ray-Ban start at about $140 and go as high as $450, but you can buy sunglasses with similar UV protection apparently on Alibaba for literally a dime a dozen, provided that you order a couple thousand at a time. So you might have asked yourself at one point, what is the difference? Well, thankfully that's what we're about to get into. You know those cheap plastic sunglasses that your local bank or fast food restaurant uses as sort of like a giveaway prize? They're basically produced by nameless companies in faraway places, and they're way less likely to be regulated in any way, shape, or form. Essentially, this is just drop shipping, and these products are not designed as much as a functional piece of eyewear protection, but as a billboard for whatever product label is on the side of it. Weirdly though, because they are being used with brands that have reputations attached to them, they have to be at least UV 400 certified, but they're really not on the same planet of anything close to Ray-Bans. Somehow worse than those though are knockoffs or replicas manufactured with no reputation to uphold whatsoever. As with any aspect of the fashion industry, brand names come at a cost and some people want a ball on a budget meaning that people will pay $50 for a decent pair of knockoffs with the idea that they're gonna look swaggy, which is a word I'm probably never gonna say again on here, so don't worry. The problem with knockoffs though is because they are stealing intellectual property, they're more likely to be manufactured covertly. Covertly? Covertly. And because of this sort of back deal dealing when it comes to quality, things really take a dive. The low quality and high affordability of these cheap and free knockoffs has turned sunglasses into a disposable luxury, which is a disaster for the environment as you can probably imagine, but also for the personal health and well-being of the people who wear them. Low quality sunglasses with no UV protection or the wrong tints trick your eyes into thinking that it's safe to open the iris more, which can be harmful long term and has even been linked to eye health issues such as cataracts and blindness. In some cases, you would actually be better not wearing sunglasses at all. So you get the gist. There is a reason that high quality sunglasses exist. So is this really even a problem? Does the mega monopoly matter if the sunglasses are a bit expensive, but you get decent quality for what you pay for? Usually with a massively vertical integrated business model like the ones we're talking about, they have the incentive to design products with a very short lifespan, especially for necessary products like razor blades and coffee pods, which we have made videos about already if you want 
wanna go check those out. This is the race to the bottom business trap where brands continue to lower quality in order to lower prices and appeal to consumers. The problem is eventually the consumer is stuck buying a $10 fry pan six times thinking that they're getting a deal when they could have just bought a nice one in the first place. But EL doesn't do this. They could theoretically just get their customers to keep paying $150 every time their sunglasses fall apart, but they don't do that. This is because in the luxury market, reputation is more important than short-term profits. The lack of industry competition keeps them from having to lower their prices while maintaining a decent level of quality for their glasses. If you spend 150 bucks on a pair of sunglasses, you'd expect them to last a decent amount of time. This, in turn, leads to brand loyalty. All right, it's time for me to Oakley load for tonight's game. Okay, forehead Oakleys, round the neck Oakleys, brim of the cap Oakleys, back of the head Oakleys, tucked into my shirt collar Oakleys, Everglades fan boat Oakleys, and Ray-Bans for my eyes because Oakleys are terrible. But this is a big mega corporation, right? They gotta keep making money. And so in order to keep their profits increasing year over year, their prices increase year over year. In fact, we figured out this thing that you can look back through the history of a company's website and we found that their prices back in 2011 were 50% lower than what they are right now. That's a huge increase in prices over the last 12 years. So you're basically stuck with a high quality, very expensive product from a luxury eyewear company or a potentially hazardous piece of junk that you got for free at a music festival. The gap in between here is very deliberate, but there are some brands filling the space. With the internet and online direct-to-consumer sales, it's motivating a whole new generation of entrepreneurs. We've seen small-scale sunglasses companies providing good quality, custom-designed sunglasses for like a decent price. My personal bias opinion is from a company called Sunski Sunglasses. They're a 1% for the planet member, they're certified climate neutral, and they use recycled plastic for all of their frames. So look into it for yourself. If you are genuinely interested in buying something that's decent quality and you don't wanna support this corporation, do some research. Find one that aligns with your values and I'm sure you'll be way happier for it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you liked it, make sure that you literally like it and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.